Of course, that brings up a whole nother argument of why did they wait till he was 18, 19 years old? The whole, pl- the whole plot hole there of Obi-Wan's going to keep an eye on him. Bullshit. If I was Obi-Wan, I would have delivered that baby to Owen Lars and said, look, here's the deal. You want to you raise this kid as your own or, or your nephew or whatever, fine. But here's the deal. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and all Saturday and Sunday, I'm coming over, and I'm going to train this little bastard from birth. I'm going to train him from birth so that by the time he's 10 years old, he can whoop some ass, let alone 18 or 19. You know, they started way too late with him. Way too late. And Leia, too. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. (laughs) Welcome to the Silver Screen Happy Hour. I'm Chris Wiegand, your host. And this is going to be a very special addition to our show. To kick off Season 2, you probably noticed from the title, uh, this is the 45th anniversary of Star Wars, and we wanted to do it upright. So we have a very special edition coming at you. It's going to be longer than normal. It's not going to follow the same format as normal, but I think you'll enjoy it. And this is going to be Part 1 of this special edition. Part 2 will be dropped probably at the end of the summer, as we like to do these every month. Hopefully you enjoyed season one. We actually recorded season one in 2021, and we finally decided we do want to do this, and we dropped those episodes in May. This has been a fun hobby for us. Jerome, being a uh, screenwriter, um, he, he lives and breathes movies, and I've always enjoyed just hanging out with him, talking with him. And for many years now, he's been living in California, and you know, you know how life is. You just don't talk as much when you don't live near each other when there's uh, without proximity. Um, so I had the idea one day, why don't I just uh, record conversations and it'll force me to talk to him more and do what I love to do, have a beer and uh, talk movies with my brother. Now, him being a screenwriter, he does bring uh, a little bit more insight and expertise into the discussion but he's fun to listen to anyways and uh hopefully uh you've enjoyed those episodes i know you're going to enjoy this one a couple of things before i start normally i say grab a drink and join us uh if you're driving don't do that be our designated driver uh also we want to hear from you and we we discovered a way we can incorporate your voice into our show so send us a voice memo on Instagram. Look us up at Silver Screen Happy Hour, and you'll be able to send a voice memo. And it's only 60 seconds of, I think it's a maximum of 60 seconds. Send us a voice memo. Give us a, a recommendation for movies you'd like to hear discussed. Uh, maybe a Six Degrees question. Or maybe you'd just like to comment on the show that you just listened to. Uh, We'd love to hear that, and then if you send this uh, voice memo, we'll be able to play it on the next episode of our show. Now, we ended up having so much to say that we ended up getting cut off by clean feed after about an hour and a half of our conversation. So this this show kind of comes to an abrupt end. We've decided that we are going to record a part two to this special edition, 45 years of Star Wars it, we couldn't do it justice in just one one recording, one hour and a half session. So we're going to give you more at the end of the summer. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop part two, but enjoy part one. So let me get the film reel going, and you'll hear uh, where my brother and I kick it off. Let me start off by saying, welcome to this special edition, special episode of the Silver Screen Happy Hour. Woohoo! Episode one of season two. I think this is a, a prequel to episode one. Can we call it that? It's a special episode. The, why, don't we, why don't we just call it the special edition? The special edition. Um, so why is this a special edition and what are we going to be talking about today? So we're not doing our normal comparisons. We're going to save that for episode two. But today is a special episode commemorating 45th anniversary of the greatest sci-fi film ever made, Star Wars. And what it has grown into 45 years later. So we really wanted to do a special episode of just talking about Star Wars for an hour. 
and uh, see where that leads us. At least an hour. I don't know how we're going to pack in. I mean, because we wanted to cover not just the first Star Wars, uh, A New Hope, as it's been come to know, be known as, um, that came out in 1977. We're going to encompass, like, anything's fair game. The whole franchise is something. We're just going to try to talk about the whole so, franchise and what it's meant, right? In an effort to not piss off the Star Wars canon geeks who likely will hear this and then <laughs> lose their shit collectively on something we say. Um, we're not experts, as you are. We're just fans. We will give you your, your props as canon nerds. And I mean that endearingly, by the way. I mean that like as a sign oh, of respect. I love the canon nerds. <laughs> um, you know, the ones that have read all the books, <laughs> like, the, like the 40, 50 novelizations, whatever there is, has seen everything. Um, we're... we're we're going to try to talk about everything, but we're not going to get to everything. And I know that there will be things that are discussed that, you know, people might be yelling at their phone or whatever audio device they're listening on saying how we got this wrong or that wrong. You're probably right. <laughs> we're, we're looking at this as just fans. Uh, okay. What do you got there, Chris? Looks like North Star Stout. Yeah. So to pair up, I, I was looking for a beer that had something to do with like aliens or outer space <laughs> i was like this is when i was scrambling because i thought we were going to record last up last week and it didn't happen but i found this uh north star stout now i could have went with an imperial stout that would have been smart that would have been awesome but this i've not tried it's from holland michigan it's from big lake brewing and uh it's well actually i have tried it now over the weekend i, I couldn't wait uh, it's delicious. I love a good stout. So let's hear the, the can open. Ooh. I gave it a heavy pour the other day. I'm going to go a little lighter this time. <laughs> but it's very Oh, my gosh. Smooth. I can see it. That's It looks like coffee. Oh, my God. That's oh yeah. thick. That's thick. Oh, yeah. Nice chocolatey now, head on it. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> now, that's... Now, oh what... I went the opposite way, of course. Now, anyone that knows me can tell you. Wait, you're the light side, I'm the dark side. Well, yeah, exa- wait, wait, we're not, I didn't get there yet. I didn't get there yet. So anyone that knows me knows when it comes to hard alcohol, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a snobbish, you know, I like the top of the line stuff. I don't like anything cheap. But when it comes to beer, I'm the exact opposite. I'm not really into the expensive uh you know, stout beers or anything like that. Anything that's thick, that's like a meal. I'm not into that. I, I like it the cheap and light. So for Star Wars, <laughs> I went with a tall. This is a double size. This oh, is yeah. what we would. This is what we'd call a mega pint. This is what <laughs> this is what Johnny Depp would call a mega pint. Uh, it's a double tall, blue can of Bud Light. Now, for everyone that's going Bud Light, this is significant now, because <laughs> Lightsaber. <laughs> it's blue, right? Anakin's yeah. lightsaber. This is not and then a of stretch. Course, it's this true. is not a stretch. It's true. And of course, I am the light, whereas you are clearly representing the dark the side. Dark side. <laughs> with that uh, delicious stout you're holding there. So now it's my turn. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait for it. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. That's good. <laughs> so. Man, where do we start? So, 1977, you were how two, old? I was two years old. Yeah. So, I did not see Star Wars in the theater or the drive-in. I remember seeing it at the drive-in. I don't remember who I was with. I was, a, I mean, I was, I turned five that December, right? No, I turned six that December. So, I was right. five years old when it was released, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember seeing it at the drive-in, you know, it's fuzzy. You're I was just a little kid, but you know, you see those, those robots up there, you know, R2-D2 and all that. And your mem- yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say your memory of seeing a new hope is my memory of empire. Cause I was five years old when empire came out. Right. Right. And that I do remember seeing in the theater. Yeah. So, I'm and, sorry. And go ahead. When empire came out, give me the year again. For Empire, 1980. 1980. They were every three years. So 1980, I was uh, I I was eight. So eight going on nine when that came out, and that was like I was the target audience, right? All the kids, yeah. I just loved it, and I I saw it multiple times at the theater, I believe, and uh, still to this day, I mean, I don't think there's 
you probably won't argue with me the best the best Star Wars movie, Empire. Um, now, <laughs> I, you know me, I can never just give a damn answer. It's always got to be a, <laughs> a paragraph or two of explanation. Um, yes, of all nine films, and we can throw Rogue One and uh, Solo in there too. For every Star Wars related feature length film, Empire is probably the best one, pound for pound. Yeah. It's one. Of, it's it's one. Of, it's on a very short list of sequels. Godfather Two is another one that many consider being better than the original. Right, right, right. Um, Aliens. A lot of people consider that on that short list as well. Um, however, you know, Empire doesn't happen. Nothing happens without Star Wars. You know, yeah. without A New Hope. A New Hope to me, uh, the only one of all of those films that was nominated for Best Picture, um, Best Director. You know, best screenplay. I mean, it was it was taken so seriously at the Oscars as it's almost like they knew back then that this was going to be groundbreaking, that this well, that, that it was groundbreaking. But it was almost like they knew then that this was going to resonate for decades. Mm. Um, it didn't take home any of those Oscars. It took home a buttload of technical awards, um, sound and visual effects. And I believe, I might be mistaken, George Lucas's wife, I believe, won for best editing. I think she edited the film. Um, her and a couple other people. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, so it was, you know, big for its time. I think Star Wars is, you know, sort of like the the staple of which everything is based on. But yeah, if you really want to talk about Pound for pound, start to finish. Empire is probably the best of all of them. So I, I'm not. I'm not even going to go into like rating. Like, how would you rate them all? Um, I mean, we can do for, that. For me, for, <laughs> for me, the the you know the first three that came out, those t- are still like the the best for me. But it's funny because I controversially I've talked to other people about this. I think when I saw Rogue One, I ranked it. Second under M- uh, Empire Strikes Back, yeah, I loved. Went, I loved it that much. You, but you I've, overshot. I've, well, I don't. Like I mellowed crazy. out. I've sobered up a little bit. I've mellowed out a little bit on that. But it's still, I think, in the top four. <laughs> I'll say it's in the top four. <laughs> when you when you first told me that, I was like, my <laughs> God, he's been drinking again and like heavily, <laughs> like, and and for me, and I, and I was the opposite. It's not that I didn't like Rogue One. I enjoyed it very much, and I especially love how it ties in the ending and yeah. leads right into A New Hope. Yeah. Um, however, for me, uh, Star Wars has always been about the Force, always been about the Jedi, always been about the Sith, good versus bad, Darth Vader, you know, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, all of that. So to have a film mm-hmm. that had virtually none of that, I mean, there was mention of the Force, but... Uh, there were no Jedi. There was no lightsaber fights. There was, you know, uh, with the exception of Vader taking a bunch of rebels out to the woodshed at the end. <laughs> right. um, there, wa- there wasn't a whole lot of what I always loved about Star Wars films. So you have to understand from my point of view, I'm sitting there for two hours going, man, everything I love about Star Wars is not in this at all. Yeah. Now, I did like the story. I thought it was very well made and definitely worthy of being a Star Wars film. Um, but when I got home and you were like, oh, it's the second best Star Wars movie behind Empire, I was like, dude, has jumped off the bridge and cracked his head. <laughs> hey, it's still a great movie. I still it, love it. I, it I, is. I thought it was a great, you know, great screenplay. Um, so, and, and they, you know, notably, they didn't do some things like it didn't have the scroll, right, at the beginning. It, it was the first tonight of the scroll, and... Any of I think what they consider here's here's where the canon nerds will will get mad at me. There's I, I want to say it's called the the Anakin uh, the Anakin storyline or whatever. That's considered the nine films, right? Yeah. Although the the, the last three have very little to do with Anakin per se, but right. uh, the Skywalker films, I guess you could say the nine Skywalker films. Anything that wasn't part of the nine Skywalker films won't have the scroll at the beginning. So right, right. Solo didn't either. And I've been hearing rumors about another Solo film. I don't know if it's going to happen. If it does, that one won't have a scroll either. I thought they canned it because how bad it did. Now, this is, but oh man, I was just I just read an article too on on why we need to give Solo a break and why we need to give it another chance. Because um, I, I really, 
honestly, here's an unpopular opinion. I liked Solo better than Rogue One. What? So yes, here's the thing. <laughs> I I heard the reviews and I never got around to watching it. I've never You've seen never, Solo. So <laughs> then you you are not allowed to speak on it then. I, you're right. I can't. Um, now, here's the thing. And I watched it with Lindsay. I think we mentioned on another podcast hmm. that you're, for anyone that doesn't know, Chris's daughter, my niece, was visiting in California and she had never seen it either. So we sat down, we watched Solo. Why I loved Solo so much. And again, people are going to be like, well, he just said he doesn't like the movies that don't have the Jedi. And none of that was in there. That's true. However, it did have Han Solo and it did have the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> so, uh, and Han Solo is my favorite of the good guys. Yeah. I liked him far better than Luke. He was my favorite rebel. Uh, my favorite all-time character, of course, is Vader. But if we're going to go non- Han, Han Vader, had the swagger. Yeah, if you're going to take Vader out of it, to me, Han Solo was my favorite character of the story, of the story of of the films. So when I heard they were doing Solo, of course, I was excited. But the thing that made it great, if you loved Empire, and most people do, Solo has a lot of those Empire callbacks. There's a lot of things. If you know Empire like you know the back of your hand, like I do, <laughs> there are little subtle things that are in Solo that you're like, ah. I, I got it. I got it. That's right. That's from Empire. That's from that. And that's from that. Um, so there were so many times that made me feel like I was almost reliving Empire Right. Uh, when I was watching Solo. I enjoyed it very much. I, I love seeing how he and Chewie first get together. Um, is awesome. They do try, try to justify the Han shoots first thing. Everybody went ape shit when the special edition Star Wars came out. I hated and, that. And and Lucas had changed A New Hope yeah, to where that was, that was awful. Uh, Greedo shoots uh, first instead of Han. Right. Right. Um, and then so they, without ruining, I'm not going to tell you, who, you know who it is he shoots because you know I don't want to ruin anything for anyone that hasn't seen it, but. There is a moment in Solo where Han shoots someone first. <laughs> and he's and you can tell it he's upset about it. Like it bothers him. Almost like you almost got this feeling he was gonna look at Chewie and say, I'm never gonna shoot first again. Like that it was almost on his face. So they do a, a job of trying to justify, okay, so when you watch a new hope and you see all that, you forgive it that they've changed it. It still didn't really work for me. I still like that he shoots first in the right. original <laughs> version. Um, there are several things, by the way, about the special editions I didn't like. That was one of them. The The other thing about the special editions were they changed to have the uh, continuity of the actor. Um, and I'm drawing a blank now because it's it's a name. Uh, he's got a, a very unique name. The guy, that plays, the guy that plays Han Solo? No, the guy that plays Django Fett in... Uh, Attack of the Clones. Oh, remember in the yeah. film, it's he's also got the voices Moana's father in the Disney movie Moana. For anyone that didn't know, um, so he since you have IMDb in front of you and I don't, you can look it up. He uh, wait, they, what you, episode was that? Uh, two a, a, episode two, Attack of the Clones. He plays Django yeah. Fett, and it. remember that in the film they use him as the clone, right? The clone host. He's the one that's providing the clones from his blood cells or whatever. So all the clones were supposed to look like him and sound like him. Well, they use his voice right. to dub over the old Boba Fett lines yeah. in Empire. And yeah. I hated that because the original actor that voiced Boba Fett had this awesome voice. And it yeah. was great. Right. And to and to redo it all. Yeah, that just I mean, I get why. It was for continuity, but but it sucked. I loved the old actor's voice. And and there are a few other changes they made. You know, they they. Um... Well, and your claim to fame is your freaking Boba Fett's voice, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that now guy hasn't done erased you. <laughs> he hasn't done anything else or much else, I guess. If you could bring up his, I'm I dude MVP was page. canceled. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah right, canceled. So the me. actor's name was it, it's it's I can't I don't know if I pronounced his first name right. Tamura, Tamura right. Morrison. That's right. That's is it right. Tamura. That's... I believe so. And that's the guy that plays Django Fett. Yeah. And uh, he also voices Moana's father. He's a great voice actor. Yeah. Well, great actor, period. I yeah. thought he was great, yeah. you know. But he's yeah. got a great voice. Like, yeah. there's a reason yeah. why they cast him in voice roles. 
um, cause he's got a great voice, but, um, so yeah, I had issues with the, so, so getting back again, for anyone that listens to our podcast knows how much we go off on tangents. I mean, yeah, we, but this whole episode is a tangent. I mean, right. come on. that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but to go back where you said you ranked, uh, we're talking about, so of the, of the nine Skywalker films. Yeah. Does it go without saying, does everybody feel the same way that it's the original trilogy, then the prequels, and then the final Disney yeah, I think I think, so here, I th- we talked about this in, in the past, too. The best thing that ever happened to episodes one, two, and three... Was the Disney sequels. Yeah, the Disney sequels of, uh, what, seven, eight, nine, right? Seven, eight, nine, yeah. <laughs> because everyone hated uh, them so much. All of a sudden, like, and, yeah, I guess it wasn't so bad. And I one, feel and so... Three. I feel so happy for <laughs> Hayden Christensen of all people, of all people, yeah. because for years yeah. it was what a terrible casting. This guy sucked. How could he be Anakin? I'm not buying it. And then the Disney sequels come out and all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, you know, the prequels, we've been hard on them. Let's bring them back. <laughs> and in fact, let's bring Hayden Christensen back for Kenobi. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm so happy for him. You I'm so spoiled that for me because I've, I'm only seen episode one of Kenobi, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, know. but his name's in the credits. You know, know. he plays Vader. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Big surprise. But yes, yeah, so I'm very. I was very happy for him. Um, yeah. So a lot with those. I mean, people still don't forgive Jar Jar. There's not going to be much forgiveness there. Yeah, but that was rough. I mean, but <laughs> so I mean, in Lucas's defense. Star Wars was made for a young audience. Yeah, and look at the Ewoks in Return of the yeah. Jedi. They said I mean, the same thing in 1983. Right. Oh, it was good, but why with the Ewoks? Get rid of the Ewoks. They said the same thing back then. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, you know, you, you got to remember this. Star Wars isn't just for us drunks. It's also for kids. <laughs> so, you know, you got to throw a little kid appeal in there. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially in the when you're going to close out your prequels. With a guy who's murdering children. <laughs> right. So, and gets burnt, almost burnt alive, and his limbs yeah. ripped off. Yes. Yeah. That was so dark. So here's the thing. When when my kids, when that came out, Lindsay was the oldest. My oldest daughter, um, I think she was like 12 or 13. And I was like, I was torn. I'm like, this is so dark. Do I let my young daughter watch this i wouldn't let any of the other kids watch it i was i thought it was too dark you know and that but i let Lindsay watch it and then but because i you know what i mean i mean you're watching it, it was was it rated r it was rated r right no 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 was uh, it pg no, 13 got, it had to be pg 13 then i think it was pg 13 it had the strongest there's... rating of all the star wars didn't it yeah i don't think there's any star wars movie that was r rated well in hindsight I don't know how it didn't get an R rating <laughs> because he literally cut his arms and legs off and watched them burn alive. <laughs> well, I'll tell you two funny things on that. Number one, Vivi and Valerie, my two daughters, one of them's going to be six in a couple of weeks. One of them's four. Yeah. They've already seen that. <laughs> oh, <God>. So <laughs> I I said, nightmares be damned. You were going to learn about Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> And you're going to learn about him right now. Oh, so uh, they've already they've already pretty much uh, I've exposed them to pretty much all the movies. Yeah. Um, now, of course, they're not they're so young that they're still not. I mean, there's times Val sees an old Obi Wan and she's like, "Who's that?" And I'm like, "That's Obi Wan. Remember that?" And she's now she's lost because <laughs> she sees you and McGregor and she's yeah. like, "Wait a minute, that other dude was Obi Wan." So again, she's only four, so she's it's hard for her to piece together these things. But yeah. so I'm, well, I'm sure I will. It's funny. I'm sure I'll revisit them as they get older. It, it's funny because we just had this conversation with my daughter Lindsay um, about how <laughs> um, the parenting uh, got much more laxed the older the kids got. And like I, I told her, I told her, look, Linz, par- we just gave up. You know, we just waved the flag <laughs> after a while. So she had the most strict parenting of all the kids. Uh, it's funny, but. Yeah, so so I guess the next question I would ask you is: so what order would you recommend a, a, ch- a young kid watch this, the tr- all of them? Would you start with episode one? So, well, wait before we get to that because that is a very very interesting question, and I have a good answer for it. But before we get to that, when you were talking about ratings uh, on episode three, here's the funny thing about the ratings industry, or rather the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America. Um, this may be wrong. It may have changed. 
But for years, I've always been under the understanding that if you uh, – the violence is where the real judgment has to come. So for language, which Star Wars never had an issue with that, but but just for when you're watching a movie, the second you say the F word yeah. one time, you're automatically at PG-13. If you say it five times, you go to R, five times or more. That was like the language barrier. Um, skin, nudity, and violence, I think, was always, you know, uh, uh, opinion. It was very objective. Now, a funny story with the, and again, we're going way off on a tangent on this one. Funny story on the ratings. This is true. When uh, um, Brian De Palma did um, Scarface back in 1983, right? He, uh, by the way, that same year Return of the Jedi came out, and people thought Return of the Jedi was dark. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> they thought that was dark. That was nothing. Because right. first of all, they're in the same year as Scarface. Right. The second thing is that when you go back and you watch, you know, uh, episode three, Revenge of the Sith, it blows Return of the Jedi out of the water as far as darkness. But so Scarface comes out. Uh, it gets sent to the MPAA for a rating. They give it an X rating. Wow. Because it's so, so violent. Right. Particularly the chainsaw scene. And. Um, I read this in a book, so if it's wrong, the r- author of the book lied. So let's just say that right now. <laughs> so when I say this is true, I mean it's true that I read this. Um, so <laughs> so they sent it back to De Palma, and they say, we're going to give it an X rating. And he, of course, is livid. He's like, I can't put it in theaters as an X rating. As nobody's going to see it. It's not going to make any money. It, you can't do this. It's not porn. What are you giving it an X for? And they're like, it's too violent. Particularly wow. the chainsaw scene. If anyone knows what I'm talking about in Scarface, there's a scene <laughs> where a guy gets his head chainsawed right in front of Al Pacino with the blood spraying on Al's face and everything. And they're like, that's too too much, man. That's too much. You, you got to cut it. He said, okay, I'm going to cut it. So Brian De Palma takes it back. He waits a few weeks, doesn't touch a damn frame, sends it back to them and says, all right, I cut the chainsaw scene. Now can I have my R rating? And they're all, yep, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even look at it. They didn't even look at it. That's didn't great. change. It, didn't change a frame. Wow. So what you see in the theater or, or on DVD, or I was going to say the theater, wow. Um, what you see on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever of Scarface, as long as it's not edited on TV, what you see on your DVD player or Blu-ray player, that's what was in the theaters. You know, I have no, that, I have no evidence of this, but we could start a rumor right now. Where you could just you know speculate wildly, maybe George Lucas did the same thing <laughs> with Revenge Lucas, of the Sith. Lucas, you can't don't light him on fire. Okay, you can't set God. a guy on fire <laughs> after uh, you cut his uh, arms uh, and legs and off. Uh, you, you can't have the charred ends of his legs or what once was his legs catch fire in a volcano and set his whole body up like a Roman candle. You can't do that <laughs> all right. and have it be a kids movie. He's like, all right, all right, I'll cut it. I'll cut it. All right, I'll edit it. I'll edit it. <laughs> Okay, it's done. Um, yeah, that would be great. That would be that would be very for somebody who's already very creative and innovative. George Lucas, that would be next level Lucas right there. Um, so ranking. So you want to go yeah. ranking? Yeah. Uh, are we throwing Solo in and and Rogue One? You can, yeah. I mean, oh so- no, you were asking me in what order to watch them. Yeah, in what order that, to watch okay. them? Okay, so so it, it, so any Star Wars geek. Anybody that's been around for as long as you and I have been around will tell you you got to start with A New Hope, start with how the, it started. The original three. The original three, and then you know follow them as the years that they came out. So you watch the original three and then the prequels. I have an interesting take on it. I think, no, you watch it in chronological. Okay. Because if you watch it in chronological, it changes your perspective for somebody who's never seen it, right? Now, V, my wife, had never seen... Star Wars before she right. was born and raised in Mexico, and then you know once she you know came to the states and you know went to college, she became an accountant and everything. Movies weren't always really her thing, mm-hmm. right? So for her to marry me, I said, <laughs> "All right, there's one thing you're gonna have to do: you got to watch these Star Wars movies." So um, begrudgingly, she accepted. But I made her watch them in chronological order. And it really was interesting to me to watch somebody who's never seen it before. Mm-hmm. It changes her perspective. She thought it was a love story mm. between Anakin and Padme. 
And all during the first three movies, she's like, so where is this Darth Vader guy everybody talks about? And I'm like, <laughs> well, you'll have to see. He shows up later. You know? She had no clue what was going to happen. Wow. So yeah, when it happened, yeah. it's you you take it from a different perspective of like, my God, I thought this was a love story between these two people. And by the end of the third movie, she's dead. <laughs> He's all but dead. Yeah. And has become His soul you know, is dead almost. The most famous villain of movie history. And where the hell do you go from here? You right. know what I mean? And then when a new hope starts and these kids, these babies that were born in the previous movie are now adults. Like, it just changed. It blew her mind. It blew, actually, blew, she didn't, you know, it didn't blow her mind. She was just, like, yeah. watching it as if it was a saga. Um, it blew my mind to see her take on it. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure, when you sure. look at it from that point of view. So, if anyone's never seen it before, I would, for fun, I say, do them in chronological order. And now you've got much more to go with. Now you can throw in Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. And you Solo. can throw in uh, Solo. You can throw Obi-Wan. in Kenobi. Yeah. Yep. You can throw in all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's cool. what I would recommend. That's cool. I, you know, I think when the, when the, the last time I remember even having this conversation was like after the first episodes one, two, and three came out. And I was like, well, how, you know, we were, I think we argued about it, but I totally see the benefit of doing it like that, you know? So if, I, if, I won't argue with you on that. It, w- it would be, well, it's fun to, for, for you and I to, to do it in order. Just yeah. to see, you know, I mean, we've already seen every movie a million times. Well, you haven't seen Solo, so you're not allowed. But yeah. anybody else <laughs> has, can say, well, we've seen all these movies a million times. It doesn't really matter what order we watch them in. But it is kind of fun if you go back and start with episode one and just kind of see the whole thing play out in chronological order. Yeah. I got to imagine, though, it does. So the the big reveal in, in Empire Strikes Back, and I hope I'm not giving anything away when you find out <laughs> Darth Vader is Luke's father. What, what? 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 Yeah, see? So, sorry. I mean, it's four, 40, how 45 years? years. 40 years. Well, or 42, 42 years since Empire. Yeah. Since Empire. But, um, but it's got to lose some of the impact if you started with episode one, two, and three, and you worked your way into, you know, four and five. So, because you, yeah, the, yes, the viewer then knows. Right, right but it's, it's replaced with... Uh, a, a, a sort of a shocker that we don't that we don't think is a shocker, his transformation into Vader. Yeah, yeah. Right? They don't see that coming. Yeah. Whereas that wasn't a surprise for us. Right. We already right. knew. Right. So the big reveal, if you're gonna watch it from somebody who's never seen it before, the big reveal becomes Anakin becomes Darth Vader. Whereas in for you know for us when we were kids, the big reveal was that he was his father. He was mm-hmm. Luke's father. So another interesting thing on that. So when the special editions came out, um, they had the the whole red carpet, you know, big premiere for the stars. You know, all the celebrities went. Harrison Ford forever has always said that he he really didn't like the character of Han Solo that much. Yeah. His favorite character was always Indiana Jones. He wanted Solo to die several <laughs> times in the saga. He was finally got his wish in one of the movies, yeah. um, but he uh, he was never a big fan of you know playing Han Solo. So, he, but he goes. He went. You know, he's he's obligated to go and help promote the thing. And so he goes. And and uh, Mark Hamill's telling this story. I, I think he he was either on Leno or Letterman or something. Mark Hamill's on. He's telling this story. So they're there watching the special edition Empire Strikes Back. They're all in the front row. Him, Carrie Fisher. Harrison Mm -hmm. Ford. Harrison Ford's sitting right next to him. That scene comes up where he gets his hand cut off. Yeah. Right? Where Vader chops off his hand after beating the living shit out of him, by the way. I mean, talk about taking out to the woodshed. Vader just just teaches Luke everything he didn't know about anything with an ass beating that he's never had before. And then ends it with cutting his hand off. Like, that's (laughs) if that wasn't enough. Um, So he's laying there and he's crying because Vader's telling him he's his father and all this shit. And then um, Mark Hamill said that Harrison Ford leaned over to him while they're watching the movie in the theater. And he said, hey, kid, I didn't know any of that happened to you. And then when <laughs> and then Mark Hamill looks at him and Harrison Ford goes. But then again, I only watch the scenes that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wow. <laughs> so, again, if that isn't true, then Mark Hamill made that up. But Mark Hamill yeah. told that story. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> So any other trivia you want to drop on us? 
Um, There's so much. I mean, there is a lot. I, I, and again, the 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 canon geeks would know all of these already, so it's not yeah any, anything they wouldn't know. But you know, there's there's just little things. Did you know that um, Wedge Antilles, the actor that played Wedge Antilles in A New Hope, is Ewan McGregor's uncle in real life? No way. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Ewan McGregor, when he got the role to play Obi Wan in for the 1999 you yeah. know episode one Phantom Menace, it meant a lot to him not just to be able to be you know, a British actor who gets to play the young version of Sir Alec Guinness, which right. that in and of itself is a huge honor. Right. But Star Wars had always been a part of his life because of his uncle. Wow. So now he got to be a part of it, and that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, that is some good trivia. So what else? What else you got? Well, we could do some easy ones, like uh, the voice of uh, Yoda. You know who the voice of Yoda is. Yes. None other than Frank Oz. Frank Oz, Who yeah. also does the voice of Miss Piggy. So that I I remember a light bulb going off in my head when I was a kid and I discovered that I'm like, oh my god, that is the same voice. <laughs> Miss Piggy is the same voice as Yoda. Like you know, realizing that as a child was interesting. Yeah. Um, but he's also has been in films. Frank uh, is also a director, but he had been in Trading Places. He's the one that does the uh, oh, strip yeah. search on Dan Aykroyd oh, and finds the PCP in his pocket. So that's Frank Oz. Uh, and again, when you see him playing on a regular part, you know, in a regular movie, you can still hear that Yoda voice. You can yeah. still kind of hear that that voice in there. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. Um, I don't know. What else? What else you got? What else you want to know about? You know that Ron Howard came on to do Solo. That's another reason why I like Solo so much. Ron Howard directed Solo. That's not trivia. That's just. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I want to say they had another director, and it just wasn't working out. I want to say, and they he was fired halfway through the shoot, and they yeah. brought on Ron Howard to finish it. Um, and if they do a second one, Ron Howard, of course, is going to be the director. Um, I want to say also Lawrence Kasdan was brought on to write the screenplay, which again is another Empire callback. A lot of reasons why people consider Empire Strikes Back the best of the Star Wars films is because of the writing, right? The dialogue. That's not George Lucas. That's Larry Kasdan, who wrote the screenplay. And they brought him on to write for Solo. So that's why there was a, a, it's a, a companion piece to Empire yeah. is Solo, which is another reason why I liked it so much. So um, I'm sorry to jump backwards. Uh, Frank Oz. So you mentioned Miss, Miss Piggy, but he also did some of the Sesame Street characters, too. Yes, Yep. So he did Cookie Monster, Bert, <laughs> Grover. I knew he did Grover because I, I, I think I did the same connection one day when I heard Grover. And I'm like, wait a minute, he, he sounds kind of like Yoda. <laughs> I like I like that he did Bert too. He yeah. did Bert. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, it, yeah. It's no, just it's fun. just been. It's yeah. I mean, I. <sighs> I'm gonna have to revisit the Disney sequels because. Um, uh, part of me, as being a Star Wars fan, I can't just let it go. <laughs> that they're, um, I guess this is as good a time as any to tell you what I would have done differently. Yeah, I I had the uh, the best idea. Now again, of course, it's I think it's the best idea because it was my idea. Yeah. But um, you almost get to the point where after the first two, right, um, Force Awakens and the Last Jedi. It was almost like they had painted themselves into a corner. They're like, well, we've built it up so much on whose Ray's parents are that we have to, it has to be something that's so amazing, right? Or else it won't make sense. She, If she's that strong and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, they come up with the idea that she's Palpatine's granddaughter, which I'll say that again. Palpatine's granddaughter which means which means they have to bring him back right so it almost negates the whole thing about vader bringing balance to the force and right. fulfilling his destiny by killing palpatine at the end of return of the jedi well if that guy just gets to come back yeah i know then it negates the whole chosen one thing so i had so i was very i, I was had a lot of mixed feelings when i say mixed it's because as a Star Wars fan, I tell myself going into any Star Wars movie, I'm going to love it. 
because it's Star Wars, and that's it, and I have to defend it, and I have to love it. Even if I hate it, I have to love it and defend it. So when I hate it, it hurts that much more, like, in my core, because now I have to defend it. And if it's something I didn't like, I still have to defend it because it's Star Wars, and I love it. Um, But but, So here's what I was going to do. Here would have been my solution. Tell me if you like this. So first, let me preface this by saying, you know how all things in nature cleanse themselves, right? There's natural forest fires, right? It's the sun creates the forest fire. It's nature. Or it burn, yeah. it, it bur- or lightning, and it burns out all the old uh, vegetation mm-hmm. so that new vegetation can grow. Right. It's nature. It's not man-made. This is just how the earth works. It cleanses itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So what if the force kind of did the same thing and the force tried to create the chosen one with Anakin, but failed? Right. Because why? Because Anakin uh, didn't have a father. He was conceived by the midichlorians, but his mother was weak. And I'm sorry to piss on the grave of his mother, <laughs> who was killed by the Tusken Raiders and gave us a great little revenge moment for him. You're gonna, we're but gonna she, get hate mail. <laughs> but she was weak. I'm sorry, she was weak. She was a weak character. Was she out fighting the galaxies? No. Was she a good mom? Yes, absolutely. But she was not a warrior, right? So he had half of his DNA was midichlorians, and the other half was some weak ass slave mom. <laughs> So, <laughs> here's where the hate mail starts yeah, to come in. Oh yeah. so, it's gonna... so, but what if the force recognized this error and was like, okay, we can cleanse ourselves. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it again. Only this time we're going to implant these midichlorians into a strong, force-sensitive warrior. And they'd... Female warrior. Princess Leia. Okay. That if it had come out that Ray, that Ray was actually Kylo's sister, as I think a lot of people thought it was they, going that that's way. Where, that's where I thought it was going. Yeah. That they were actually brother and sister, and that that's Leia's daughter, and it makes sense on a couple different levels. First of all, if Han didn't knock her up, <laughs> and she got pregnant. What do you think Han would say? Pretty much the same thing Joseph said when Mary told him she was pregnant. Right? What? <laughs> You're impregnated by God? Like, you know, that had to have been a lot for Joseph to accept, right? <laughs> Solo, the Force Awakens, with them being estranged, yeah. Solo is taken off. He has left Leia. What if that was the reason why? Mm-hmm. He left her because she got pregnant and he couldn't accept the fact that she was conceived or she had conceived a child from the Minichlorians, from the Force. He never really believed in that shit anyway, right? right? So it made sense that he would leave thinking she was unfaithful. She has the baby, but because she wants Solo back or whatever, she gives the baby away or gives the baby up for adoption, whatever. You can come up with whatever you want at that point. But if Rey was actually conceived by the midichlorians but had been born of Leia, not some weak slave mom, but Princess Leia, then you would have the ultimate chosen one. That would have been ultimately... Like, better. I mean, it's just... Right? Better than what they gave us. (laughs) Exactly. Right? I mean, actually, a a nice ham sandwich was better than what they gave us, but... But I I thought that's where it was gonna go, and right. I had predi- and I was telling people this. I'm like, I know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. I know, and of course, it didn't happen. Right. And I was like, man, my idea was so much better than that. Why didn't they use my idea? <laughs> and I was really bummed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I will say one thing for the Last Jedi. Everybody hates the Last Jedi, and they say that the Last Jedi is sort of the reason why the Disney sequels failed because they, they didn't have a coherent three film structure like the other ones did. You know, there's a point in a new hope, right? Um, I mean the, the original trilogy for all intents and purposes, the movies could have ended after return of the Jedi, right? Mm -hmm. You have the rise of Luke Skywalker, you have the fall and you have the, 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 the rise again, the redemption, right? The, A New Hope, he's his ascension, Empire Strikes Back, they get their asses kicked, and then Return of the Jedi, everything is well, they kill the bad guys, the good guys win. And if you look at the prequels, 
you know, other than it ending on such a downer, it was set up as a three film story, right? Right, right, right. So, so the, the, I think the reason why the Disney sequels failed is because they didn't have that cohesive, you know, uh, three film. This is all leading to the same place. They was very choppy. You had different directors. Right. You had a, a, the guy came in, uh, Ryan Johnson, who, you know, uh, I mean, I feel bad for him that everybody wants him dead. Like, he, I mean, <laughs> the amount of hate mail that that guy has gotten in his life yeah, for directing rough. The Last Jedi. Yeah. And, and even Mark Hamill very much didn't agree with where that was going, you know. And he's like, wait a minute. You know, and you've got to imagine they all went into J.J. Abrams' office and said, wait a second. We didn't talk about any of this shit. Now, all of a sudden, this is what we're going to do. It's almost like we're changing mm. halfway through these three films. We're now, like, doing a, a complete stop and doing something else. The yeah. character of Finn. He he even said, man, when that when Force Awakens came out, I thought this was going to be a lot about me. My character was slowly written out as the movies went on. You know, um, Oscar Isaac, same thing. He said, you know, I... He really had hoped that the direction of his character would have gone better places. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't, there wasn't, it didn't seem like there was a lot of thought as a three film thing when they first sat down. It seems like they went one at a time. Let's do Force Awakens and then we'll hire a different ri- director and a bunch of different writers or whatever and we'll come up with the next one. And then on the basis of that, we'll do the next one. Right. There was yep. no cohesiveness, I, and because of it, it failed. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And you know, I it's it's all the all the TV shows that are coming out now are seem they're like so good. The uh, Mandalorian and Obi Wan Kenobi. Don't you wish? Uh, what's the guy's name that's that's producing those and directing them? Uh, uh, God, it's going to kill me now. I can't remember. Well, there's. Uh, there's a female director that's been doing the the Kenobi movies or the Kenobi episodes. Uh, I want to say it's, um, geez, I'm going to butcher it. If you have it in front of you, Deborah Deborah Chow is it Deborah Chow? Did I screw that up? Anyone that's screaming at their audio device right now? Amen. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, it it makes you miss it, well, the prequels. And, and if, <laughs> if only the, some of these people that are involved with these shows could have been in, involved in the pr- creation of these sequels that came out, you know, by Disney, yeah. it, it would have been nice to have. I don't know, just to see where it would have, where it would have. So, John, John Favreau. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 F- Bravo. If, if and he he's been around. Yeah, well, he's been if, around with Disney because well, he, he's he's been a part of the Marvel the Marvel franchise. Yeah, I know, but man, he's just done such a good job with all these. Uh, and, and he's a Star Wars geek like yeah, us, yeah. so he, you know what I mean? Like he, yeah, he probably should have directed the three Disney sequels. Yeah, and, and, and you would have had you would have had a different situation. Abrams could have still been the producer. It still could have been his bag, yep. but they should have got John Favreau to be like, "Okay, you're going to do the three movies, yeah, and you're and you're going to write a three film storyline, yeah, that, that would make sense." And I got, I wish that would have happened. <laughs> okay, this is uh the second the second uh, of the North Star Stout go, opening up right now. Oh God, <laughs> it gives me wood, dude. <laughs> I get a semi whenever I hear that. <laughs> okay, so um, so Deborah Chow is what I said, and I believe I just looked it up, and it's, that's correct. So she's directed the the Kenobi episodes, mm-hmm. and she did, did a fantastic job. So if I, for all the hate that the Last Jedi gets, and rightfully so, there is one thing that shocked me. Um, I thought it was super cool, and it was it was. Uh, let me preface this by saying that when I saw the prequels, and I saw what a trained Jedi could really do with mm-hmm. Obi Wan and Qui Gon Jinn, I remember the first thought was, "Man, Luke was a pussy, right? <laughs> Luke, Luke. If this is what a real Jedi is, Luke was a pussy. That dude. Imagine if he. But I, and, and of course, that brings up a whole other argument of." Why did they wait till he was 18, 19 years old? The whole pl- the whole plot hole there of Obi-Wan's going to keep an eye on him. Bullshit. If I was Obi-Wan, I would have delivered that baby to Owen Lars and said, "Look, here's the deal. You want to you want to raise this kid as your own or, or your nephew or whatever. Fine. But here's the deal. Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and all <laughs> Saturday and Sunday, I'm coming over and I'm going to train this little bastard from birth." <laughs> 
I'm going to train him from birth so that by the time he's 10 years old, he can right. whoop some ass, let alone 18 or 19. <laughs> You know, they started way too late with him. Way yeah. too late. And Leia, too. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's My first thought when I saw the prequels was, <laughs> yes, uh, that this makes Luke look kind of like a pussy because in comparison, he is nowhere near how Obi-Wan was as good as Obi-Wan and blah, blah, blah. Although Luke puts on a pretty impressive performance in Return sure. of the Jedi against Vader, um, you still watch that and you're like, wow, look what Qui-Gon can do. Look what Obi-Wan can do. If these are what real Jedi can do. I mean, you you watch Yoda in Attack of the Clones and yeah. you're like, oh my God, <laughs> Luke is nowhere near this level, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but then something interesting happens. In The Last Jedi, Luke does something that not even Yoda could do. Now, Luke uh, ends up going into hiding himself, right? And he mm -hmm. just starts studying the Jedi text, right? That's the whole thing about all the books. He's, right. He becomes almost a scholar of the Jedi text. And he uses the Force to have a lightsaber fight with Kylo without ever even being there. That's some next level Jedi shit. Not, <laughs> not even Yoda ever pulled that yeah, off. That was, I, right? I, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so at the moment that that happened, I was in the theater and I went, okay, okay, I'll give Luke his credit now because <laughs> no Jedi has been able to ever do that, ever. Right. Like that's next level shit right there. <laughs> so, uh, so that was kind of cool. But that's like the only saving grace of, of The Last Jedi was that one moment, you know? Yeah. Jeez. To say nothing of the fact... That in Force Awakens, they present you the idea that Luke is going to be in the film. And he's only in, like, the last two seconds. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and, and that kind of pissed people off, I think, right off the bat. You know, you get the idea that we're going to see Luke, Han, and Leia. Right, right. And you kind of, but you don't get to see them all together again. You know? Yeah. And... Um, and I want to say one of them said that. Did Carrie Fisher say that before she died? I want to say that before she died, she said something in an interview that that was that kind of what bummed her out was that she wanted just one scene where all three of them were back together again, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it and it didn't happen. All they had was photo shoots, you know, and they got to do the publicity tour and everything. But you know, all the shit that Harrison Ford hates anyway, right? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so you got a disgruntled Harrison Ford instead of you know a scene where they're all three of them would have been together. Yeah. Would have been great. But anyway. All right. So uh, now that we did chronological order, let's talk ranking. We got 12. No, we've got 11 films, right? We've got the nine uh, Skywalker films and then Rogue One and Solo. I think we can all agree Empire is number one, mm -hmm. right? Followed very, very closely by A New Hope. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, so those two are, are those are concrete, etched in stone. You're not moving those. Where do you go at the very, very bottom? Oh. Let's go all let's go all the way down to eleven. Uh, is it the, is it the last Jedi? Yes. <laughs> the what? The Is it the Last Jedi? Which is episode be, nine, right? Eight. No, it's episode eight. Nine oh, is the, right, the Rise, Rise, of, Rise Skywalker. of Skywalker. Right. Yeah, I mean those are both a toss up for me. I mean, I just wasn't into it as much. I went and saw it because I was I was starved for some Star Wars content. <laughs> um, okay, so we can agree then that episodes uh, or our ranking, the ranking of nine, ten, and eleven would be episodes seven, eight, and nine, right? Pretty much like yeah. the three the three Disney sequels yeah. would be the bottom three on this list. Yeah, and so in the so you you take Empire, A New Hope, and. Re, uh, Return of the Jedi, those are the top three, right? So you would put Return of the Jedi at three? Yeah, I would. And then I would follow that with episode three. Um, or Rogue One. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. Because <laughs> I told you, I thought Rogue One I, was I up there. I can see I your love... list is going to be far different from mine. Um, now, here, oh, man. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. Re Re uh, Return of the Jedi has got to be three. I was thinking playfully about moving it down a notch mm -hmm. because what I think should be four, ranked number four, is The Phantom Menace. 
Now, for all the hate that Jar Jar gets, The Phantom Menace, man, when that movie first came out, and I know everybody hates Jake Lloyd, too, and he got some unfair hate mail, too. It's just a kid, you know what I mean? Right. He's, <laughs> he's just a kid, people. Like, um, I, I didn't mind. I mean, the writing, you know, George Lucas has never been a great dialogue writer. Oh, God. Uh, no. if, if I would have changed anything, I would have said, hey, George, if you're going to do these prequels, have Larry Kasdan come in to write the screenplays, at least. You know? But, um... So, you know, people blamed him for his bad lines, just like they blamed Hayden Christensen for the sand speech in episode (laughs) two. Not his fault. That's George Lucas. He didn't write that that shit. Lucas did. So um, so Jake Lloyd got some unfair hatred. And of course, Jar Jar gets uh, rightful hatred. But um, (laughs) (laughs) but but the thing about the Phantom Menace was it was the first time I got to go to the theater and see a Star Wars movie in 20 years as an adult. As an adult, well, what was it? it was more like 16 years, but whatever it was. Uh, yeah, 16 years. So as an adult, yeah, mm-hmm. as somebody that can go get drunk after and talk about it. <laughs> like, so so the Phantom Menace, to me, it meant something. Like, it was so, and, and to see Obi-Wan, yeah. Ewan McGregor as a young uh, Sir Alec Guinness, a, a young Obi-Wan Kenobi, man, that movie was awesome. Yeah. Again, everybody goes and they bag on Jar Jar and they bag on Jake Lloyd. Take the movie as what it was. The movie was fun. You got to see a badass like Darth Maul. You got to see the the beginning of Palpatine, right? Yeah. You got to see all that shit start happening. Uh, (laughs) Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu? I mean, come on, man. So I put Phantom Menace... Uh, I like I said, I almost put it at three, but I'll give Return of the Jedi its due. I'll leave that at three, and I'll put Phantom Menace at four. Um, probably Revenge of the Sith then is five for me. Yeah, and, and, the, and the, Attack, and then Attack of the Clones. Yeah, I'm gonna go solo above Rogue One. <sighs> well, I gotta watch it. I haven't seen it, so I can't yeah. talk about it. I ha- uh, and again, mostly because anybody that's a diehard fan of Empire, you you get. It's it's almost like a companion piece. There's so many callbacks. It's almost written the same way. Lando, his character is awesome in Solo. Uh, um, what's his name? Um, Donald Glover plays Lando Calrissian. So it plays him perfectly. Yeah. Plays him perfectly. I remember a girl came into my store. She had just got out of the theater because she was wearing a Solo shirt. And I said, hey, nice shirt. Did you see the movie? She said, yes. I said, God, wasn't Lando awesome? She goes, I couldn't stand him. <laughs> and, and I said, and I go, but that's the point. He's a scoundrel. <laughs> and she goes, you know what? You're right. You're right. <laughs> he was perfect for who Lando is. Right. <laughs> she just didn't like him. And I'm like, but that's that's the whole point. You're not supposed to like him. He's a scoundrel. Right. 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 And And it totally sets up. Where they see each other again in Empire. Yeah, it like didn't that's he's gonna get punched or hugged. Right, and and the movie ends exactly like that. Yeah, that's that good. These two guys have just gone through an amazing experience, where Lando cannot stand Solo, but at the same time can respect his ability. So if they don't see each other for twenty years, how are they gonna react when they see each other? And that's exactly how Empire picks up. Yeah. So it's a perfect companion piece, and that's why I would put Solo above Rogue One. Right. Although Rogue One's lead into A New Hope is, it can't be denied. That's so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was so good. So Solo is on my watch list for this week. Done. So here's a here's something I was going to throw at you, and I didn't prep you for this. So maybe off the top of your head, you can think of instances of Star Wars coming up in pop culture like tv shows or other movies so one of my favorites was in the mo- the tv show lost when hurley w- they had this whole time travel sequence where jj abrams jj abrams jj abrams yeah right. the, the the people in lost are on this island and they go back in time to the 1970s and hurley the guy that plays hurley he realizes when he is, and he's like, dude, I can fix Return of the Jedi. <laughs> he was trying to rewrite the script to get it to Lucas <laughs> so, so that you would never have the Ewoks. <laughs> I just thought it was a great little sidebar of that one of those episodes. It was just fun. So but, I don't know. You can know- you think of other any others? Oh, there's oh, man, mean, there's way yeah. too there's there's Any way too favorites? many favorites. I mean, that was one of my favorites. Um, just to me, subtle little things. 
Like in, um, oh, geez, what was it? The first American Pie movie mm. where the nerdy kid, what's his, what was his name? Sherman. He ends up like get he, what had happened was I think later they discover that he set a rumor around the school that he had a huge dick. So this nerdy kid was able to get all the hot girls. Right. But there's one scene where Stifler sees him talking to these hot chicks and they're like, how does he get these hot chicks? And Stifler said something like the force is strong with this one. <laughs> you know, like, like like little things like that. You know, like I mean, that to me is how you know that Star Wars has made its imprint on pop culture yeah. when just a little line of dialogue like that is so accepted and so normal. Right. Because we all think about shit like that. I mean, every time I post about Vivi on Facebook, I'll hashtag the force is strong with this one or the force is strong in my family. Because I really feel like Vivi is the closest thing to a human that has the force. Some of the stuff she does is ridiculous. But I mean, I'm sure we all feel that way about our kids. But uh, well, of course, we wouldn't have star. We wouldn't have space balls if it wasn't for Star Wars. You wouldn't have. That's a you wouldn't. Here's one. You wouldn't have Jurassic Park if you didn't have Star Wars. How so? There's n- there's no way that film gets made if industrial light if Lucas doesn't create yeah. industrial light and magic and Skywalker sound uh, maybe it gets made but it looks like a Land Before Time or something yeah, it doesn't right. look like what we know of Jurassic Park yeah. Titanic couldn't get finished Digital Domain went bankrupt trying to post Titanic wow. when I say post. That means the post-production of all the special effects and everything. They couldn't post that film. They ran out of money. They had to get ILM, Lucas's Industrial Light Magic, to finish Titanic. Wow. Or that movie doesn't get finished. Wow. So, I mean, uh, anything that has been groundbreaking in, in special effects has all come from Star Wars. Like, that has created... It's almost like, uh, you know, funny, we should mention Jurassic Park. Um, Jeff Goldblum's got a great line in that where he says, you stood on the shoulders of giants and, you know, you, you, uh, however he finishes, you know, but you don't, you didn't learn the discipline for yourself. So you don't have to take any responsibility. Right. Special effects artists today, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And not, I'm not saying it so negatively, like they don't take any responsibility, but I'm saying they're standing on the shoulders of industrial light and magic. Right. They're standing on the shoulders of Star Wars and seeing where they can go from there. Right. So when you go to an IMAX movie now and you see, I don't know, Top Gun 2 or whatever, and you're like, man, the special effects are amazing. I always walk out of there going, yeah, you can thank George Lucas for that because <laughs> none of that shit would exist if if it wasn't for Star Wars. Yeah. You know, and maybe I'm heaping a little bit too much praise, but I don't think so. I think Star Wars is the reason we have these movies today. Hmm. We might yeah. still have them, but they wouldn't look nearly as good. Right. That makes sense. And and <laughs> there was a time uh, right when it was announced that he was doing the special editions and he was going to it was announced that he was going to do the three films. Right. And everybody started going crazy. Oh, my God, we're going to see Anakin turn into Vader. We're going to see it all. We're going to see the beginning of it all. Blah, 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 blah. I remember him saying or writing somewhere where I read this that Lucas had said and this was in 1998. So the uh, Phantom Menace had come out in 99. So they were shooting it. Mm-hmm. Somebody asked him about the third movie, and he said something along the lines of, I'm going to paraphrase, not quote, something along the lines of, we don't have the technology yet for what I want to do for the third movie. <laughs> so take Damn. that into perspective yeah. of this guy's always thinking he was a generation like, ahead of yeah, everybody else. He was else. kind of the Elon Musk of movie makers, right? Yes, I mean, of, of, yes. Yes, no. absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's and, pretty fascinating. And it wasn't just sight and sound. This one I will quote, because I do remember his quote of this pretty pretty clearly, where he once said, a special effect without a story is a boring thing. Mm. Right? Because right. to him, it was the story. Yeah. It's, not, it's not the special effects. That's, you know, sure, it's important for the visual sight and sound. But for him, it was the story. It's got to be a story that people can like fall in love with and my god 45 years later we're sitting here talking about a movie that <laughs> a lot of people at 20th century fox thought was gonna bomb well and didn't on day it, one. I, correct me if i'm wrong didn't it only release on like 40 40 theaters or something like that i it was don't cra- know it was a crazy small number i don't remember i don't o- know it's opening facts opening i don't weekend. I, I don't know the opening weekend stats but i mean so much so, so much so that they thought this thing was going to tank that 
all Lucas really wanted in his contract to finish making the film that it was already running over budget, right? To finish it, all he wanted was sequel rights and merchandising rights. And 20th Century Fox laughed. They're like, yeah, you can have that, sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this, this thing's going to tank. I doubt there'll be any sequels. There's certainly not going to be any toys. So, yeah, you can go ahead and you can you can own the merchandising rights. You're not going to make dick off that. Go for it. And then what happens? Big right? Mistake. Like, <laughs> big mistake. So, um, but that's again, that's Lucas thinking a generation ahead of everybody else. And that's the thing about George Lucas is he's always. Dude, dude I got to stop you. Star okay. Wars opened in only 32 theaters on May 25th, 1977. <laughs> 32. 32. So 32 major cities. <laughs> Not even all 50 states got to see it, right? I mean, so, holy crap. Th- that just goes to show they had no intention of this movie being big. That's amazing. 32. I I overshot it when I said 40. <laughs> you gave it too much credit. Uh, it ended up grossing in its first run uh, $307 million. Of oh, 1977. Yeah. I was, yeah. It's important to note that that's 1977 dollars. Yeah. Hey, wait, oh, wait, 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 hang on, hang on one second. So, so, so how many theaters was it again? 32 cinemas. Now, um, hold on. That was in its first run, but they probably expanded the theaters, I imagine, at, during that run. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So, so how much, wait a second. So I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta price this out here. Uh, how much did it make in its first run? 307, 263,857. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> slower, slower. I went to a Catholic school. Slower. 300, what was it? 300. Had better education than I did. <laughs> 300 and what? 307. Uh huh. Comma. Yes. 263. <laughs> Two six three, comma, uh huh, eight five seven. Okay, and that was in nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. Do you know what that is today? How much? I, I went on to my little uh, inflation calculator. It's the equivalent. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Calculate. <laughs> I don't even know what number that is. One <laughs> one point four billion. That's the equivalent of one point four billion in today's dollars, dude. Now in that's insane. Month, in an eighteen month run, that is insane. One point four eight two, mind you. So almost one point five, one and a half billion dollars by today's wow. money. That's nuts. Now you could say, well, that's inflation. That's, uh, but yeah, okay. And that fine. was in its first run. So how much did it gross? Period. Oh, it I stayed. It, it was rerun in theaters three other times. Yeah, and as, and that's before the special editions. Hold on, we're gonna go to this site. Let's see, I mean, that's just crazy. If you think about, you're gonna edit out all this downtime that we're looking at shit on the internet, right? No, <laughs> this is valuable. <laughs> this is part of the podcast. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys are now listening to us look up shit on the internet. <laughs> that's that's money well spent right there for us. That's, that's time time well spent. Um, yeah, I mean, so one 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 and a half billion dollars. Now I know that they say that the same could be said for like Gone with the Wind. If you went back and look at Gone with the Wind's numbers and and adjusted for inflation, it's well over like two billion. That's another yeah. crazy one because that movie's like four hours long. Right. So that's insane. So that's even more crazy shit right there. <laughs> but to think Star Wars, man. To think that they thought it was going to be a bomb, and it ended up being so huge, it's just crazy. All right, so, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find. I was, I was going to see if I could find uh, that website. Didn't tell me anything. So. The total, you can get total gross somewhere on the internet. Yeah, I just got. I employ I, again. The canon geeks are probably screaming it out right now because they already know. I know. They have it. They have it tattooed on their chest or something. The total gross of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but uh, but anyone can look it up. But yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. If you adjust for inflation, what what it meant today would just be insane. So, worldwide box office for uh, episode four, A New Hope. Jeez, seven hundred seven hundred and seventy five million. Now, is that uh, all of its runs? I'm sure it is. Including the special edition. But see, it's it's difficult, that number, because 
um, they re-released, you know, the special edition was released in 1997. Yeah. So 20 years later, so inflation already adjusted a little bit there. Yeah, so it's hard to so, it's hard to really put your finger on that one, figure that right, out. Right. Right, so. to really to really I mean it, it, it so be really difficult to All in out, all but. though, they added all up all the Star Wars movies, it's over 10 billion dollars. Not surprising. Yeah. Not surprising. Not at all. to mention all the merchandising and all the TV yep. shows. That's just the box office. Yep. That's nuts. Yeah. So, and then you throw in again, he used that money invested into Skywalker Sound, uh, Industrial Light and Magic. I mean, how many more things does Lucas really have had his pulse on, you know? Now, I realize he sold it all, right? When yeah. you sell Lucasfilm. Um, he did not get at all what I felt it was worth. Now, I think he just wanted to get out of the game. He was ready to retire. So he sold it. I get it. But really, like you said, ten billion, and we're not even talking about the merchandising and all that other stuff. Uh, what, and what did Disney buy it for? Five, six billion dollars. That's it. Something like, like that. Yeah, like I, I mean, it was if four. Luke, if Luke, it could have been. I mean, I, again, you'd have to look that up. I yeah. can't remember what they paid for it, but Lucas could have, if he wanted to, said, "Look, if you want the entire catalog, and you want the rights to the name, the toys, and everything." Then I, I, you got to give me twenty billion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, but yeah. and they and they probably would have done it. Well, I don't know if they could afford it. They probably could. They're, yeah, they are, it was, they, are, they are Disney. It was four billion they paid. Four billion. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. It had already made all that money. Be- well, not ten because that includes the last three when Disney owned it. But still, it made a crap ton of money already. So the good thing about Disney buying it. Is now we get all these spinoffs that never would have happened because Lucas was pretty much done. Yeah, so. he was real strict about you know the six films, it's the Anakin films. That's all. That's the story I want to tell, and I'm really done with it after that. Yeah. Yes, it's true that the greedy people over at Disney are actually working in our favor <laughs> <laughs> because they're they keep releasing Star Wars content for their own greedy needs, but at the same time, it's it's a benefit to us because we love Star Wars. So yeah. You know, give us whatever you got, Disney. We'll take it. You know, I mean, the, I haven't even seen Book of Boba Fett yet. Neither I haven't even I. seen. I haven't seen the Bad Batch yet. You know what the Bad Batch is? I saw. I saw something about it, but I have not. I haven't even seen anything. I really so, on it. So get get this shit again. The canon nerds are screaming at their radio yeah. right now. Go, well, oh my radio. god, how I, right or, or whatever it is at they're listening to us, at their phone. <laughs> um, from what I understand, at the end of the. Um, the Clone Wars, right? Yeah. When Palpatine gives Order sixty six, yeah, and all the clones turn on the Jedi. There's a ba- a bad batch that they call a group of the clones that didn't, uh, they weren't programmed with that order, so they refused to follow Order sixty six. So there are a, gr- a group of clones that are still good guys. Wow. And they're considered the bad batch by the Empire because they right. didn't follow Order sixty six. Oh, I'd watch that. that. That's all I know of it. Yeah. That's I'd all watch I know. I'd watch that. I know. I want to watch it. That sounds awesome. So, um, but anyway, yeah, like, again, there's people screaming at their phone right now going, duh, I watched that two years ago. You're behind, you know. Well, whatever. a lot of this, a lot of this was in, like, comic books and stuff like that, right? For years, a lot of this yeah, stuff well, that's coming uh, to the screen now. Novelizations, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean about these guys that have read the 40, 50 books, whatever it is. Yeah. I had a buddy of mine back in Michigan that had read all that shit. And he read the Bounty Hunter books. And he read, you know, he's the kind of guy to be like, well, the, the Star Destroyer X-42, you know, was the <laughs> upgraded version of the... Bl-. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, so uh, there are guys out there that have read so much more than I'll ever know. Yeah. They have forgotten more about Star Wars than I'll ever know. And I consider myself a pretty knowledgeable geek. Um, but, you know, so, yeah. Th- so those guys, man, you just get in a room and crack open a bottle of whiskey with one of those guys. They'll blow your mind. <laughs> they will blow your mind with the shit they know. Well, that's the fun thing about this is there's always someone nerdier than you out there. <laughs> well, and again, that's what Star Wars did to people. Yeah. That's what Star Wars does to people, right? I mean, there are people that have dedicated their lives to Star Wars. They still have toys in their basement, <laughs> right? So, but anyway. We want to save room for six degrees. Is there anything else you want to go to before we get to that? <laughs> 
And did you look at the the six degrees I sent you the, today? Um, I just glanced. Okay. Um, okay. But but uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, we're we're gonna break the rule a little bit here. Now the whole point of six degrees is that you know the the hypothesis is that there are no two actors that cannot be connected within six degrees. A degree being a feature length film that uh, you know we. we Everybody talks about the Kevin Bacon game, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. We always contend that it's not just Kevin Bacon. Any two. Any two can be connected within Six Degrees. And we have yet to be proven wrong. The point, though, is to see if there are. If there are two people that can't be connected within Six. But we're going to do it a little differently today. We're going to break the rules. We can't. We're going to use two Star Wars actors, but we can't use Star Wars movies. (laughs) <laughs> and um that and you, ups the level of difficulty it, it does yeah. it does especially if you pick people that are known for star wars and aren't known for other things well not um, only let's just talk about let's go into it because not only did i throw two actors at you that are known for star wars but one of them he hasn't done a whole lot Besides, no. be, besides Star so, Wars. So if I if I remember correctly, you shot at me, Jake Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, young Anakin, little boy Anakin, from Episode One. Yeah, and and who was the other one? The uh, Daisy Ridley. Right, right. Okay, so who was in the 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 Disney sequels? So, so here's where your downfall is. She plays Rey. <laughs> While in the Star Wars universe. Those two people are separated by, what, 40, 50 years of timeline. The movies aren't yeah. separated by that much, right? No, but so, they, yeah, correct. So actors that were in those films... I know, but I could have took it someone from 1977, but I didn't. But I can't use Star Wars. So you I can't, if, if, yeah, right. So, so Jake Lloyd... Um, his only, I think, the, his only real notable film prior to being Anakin, which changed his life forever, was he was Schwarzenegger's son in Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way, right? Right. Nineteen ninety six. Right. right. And he right. had to be real little. How old is that kid? Cause yeah, that was because yeah, because ninety six. Jingle All right? the Way. And, th- and three years later, he was Anakin. So, jeez, uh, I don't know how old he is, but um, so he was like so, six. Uh, he was six years old. When so uh, Arnold, Jingle All the Way came out. And we always talk about when you play this game, the key is to find that one dude that's been around a long time. Yeah, Arnold. Yeah. Uh, because then they can branch out into other things. But here's the problem with Arnold. <laughs> he's not he's not in a lot of movies with other people, right? Yeah, it's it's they're usually, they're usually movies about him, right? Yeah. And a shit, <laughs> shitload of people you don't know. So, and like, you know, so you got to think, I mean, that's, of course, it's not true for everything, but by and large, an Arnold movie is Arnold. Um, but... If you go, if you go Batman and Robin, where he played Mister Freeze, right? That really terrible Batman movie oh, that Arnold God. was in. I about that, yeah. Right, um, George Clooney then can link you to other things because Clooney played Batman in that movie, and Clooney gives a little bit more credibility because he's been in a lot of movies with a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Like when you think of like uh, the Ocean's Eleven movies, like it branches out in a million different directions. Um, but just off top of my head, um, Daisy Ridley. Okay, so it's so so it's four. I got it in four. You already got it. Yeah, because <laughs> I remembered that the other high profile film that Daisy Ridley was in was uh, The Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a movie by Kenneth Branagh. Had a lot of people in it, right? One of the people that was in it was Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay. Right? So for anyone that so... loves movies, knows already where I'm going with this. George oh, Clooney that's a and Batman Michelle movie. Pfeiffer. Batman. No. Right? She was in Batman. Well, right, but he... Oh, that George, wrong movie, George, right? George, right, George Clooney. That's the wrong Batman. <laughs> George Clooney was in One Fine Day with Michelle Pfeiffer, though. Mm. So, so there you go. So you got Murder on the Orient Express, uh, One Fine Day, mm-hmm. Batman and Robin, Jingle All the Way. There it is. Good job. <laughs> Four. When I and, I thought I had you because I was looking at that kid's IMDb and I'm like he ain't been in nothing. <laughs> I I was afraid you were gonna pick like a, a an imperial officer in the background of a New Hope or something, and I'd be like, my God, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, again, if you can't use Star Wars movies, that's difficult. Yeah, but um, even then, you had. Uh, uh, 
Alec Guinness, who was in a lot of movies back in the day. Yeah, but I can't use Star Wars movies. Oh, so if you if right. you had picked yeah. somebody from A New Hope, you can't use them. I can't use Alec Guinness. That was good. That was, I'm unless they you got it in four. Unless the this background Imperial <laughs> officer that you were going to pick was also a background Imperial officer in Bridge on the River Kwai, I wasn't going to be able to use Alec Guinness. So <laughs> you know. Yeah. Wow. Good, good job. Good but, job. Yeah. Well, that's Clooney. You can thank Clooney for that one because again, Arnold doesn't really get you much. Yeah. You know, when I think of Arnold, what do you think of? Uh, Linda Hamilton. Yeah. Maybe. You know, uh, Tom well, Arnold. Yeah, I thought Terminator. You know. Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, yeah. I thought Bill Paxton. You could have used him. <laughs> you know what? And I bet you, like we he always was say. Terminator too. Also. What I always say, yeah, ter- yeah, Terminator also. You don't want to say Terminator 2. <laughs> he was in Terminator also, but also True Lies. Yeah. So, and that's why we always end up these six degrees by saying, look, that's not the end-all be-all. I bet you it can be done in less. Right. I bet you it can be done in less. If we really took the time and you really went through IMDb, I bet you Jake Lloyd and Daisy Ridley could be, could, could be connected in less than four degrees. Yeah. But that's just off the top of my head. I went big budget, Arnold. Clooney, um, the low hanging well, fruit. The, the low hanging fruit, yeah, <laughs> as I call it. That that uh, murder on the Orient Express by Kenneth Branagh is a great movie, though. For anyone that hasn't seen it, um, Kenneth Branagh is so underrated. As as highly rated as he is, he's underrated. He just had he was just nominated for Belfast, that movie that was up for Oscars. This yeah, past I want to see that. I haven't seen that. Oh, yet. so good. That was so good too. Um, all right, but anyway, so that's our six degrees. Um, six degrees. A- anything else to wrap up the forty-fifth anniversary? I think we covered some ground here. We got enough people yelling at their audio yeah, device. Well, I you think. know, and I'd like to ask the the people listening if you have some trivia you want to throw at us that we didn't mention. <laughs> it's abundant. Send us some. Send us a message either through uh, Instagram. Instagram is probably the easiest way. Just follow us on Instagram, and you can. Uh, Send us a direct message there. And the nice thing about Instagram, I've been telling people this, because every time we get a follow, I, I follow it up with a voice message back. And I send them a voice message. It, it, it can only be up to 60 seconds long, so it doesn't take me long. I thank them for following, but I let them know that if they ever want to get on the show, they can send me a voice memo, and I can play it on the air. You know, if they got a question they want they want discussed, I thought it'd be a great way to interact with with uh, people listening. So if you if you got an idea for a show or a question, a six degrees question, send us send us a voice memo on our uh, Silver Screen Happy Hour uh, Instagram, and it's it'd be a great way to to get you on the air on the on the recording, and we can we can discuss you know what you have to say. So all right, before we wrap it up, yeah. I'm going to give you a couple of best and worst. Okay. So, your favorite all-time Star Wars character. Go. If you had to pick one. Yeah, Han Solo. Okay. I, I would agree. I, I, Vader's always been my favorite, but if it, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard, man, because Solo, Solo was such a badass. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, worst, worst Star Wars character. Jar Jar. Uh. <laughs> I didn't hesitate. <laughs> and and here's the here's the here's the the bad part about all this is is I, I'm probably gonna agree because <laughs> I I can't. There are other characters I had. You know who got a lot of bad publicity was Laura Dern's character in the Disney sequels. Oh yeah. She got a, she got a lot of bad uh, press because of uh she was always like the stick in the mud, right? Whenever Oscar yeah. Isaac was like, "Hey, let's go blow this up." She'd be like, "No, we can't do that." You know, and it was like audiences were like, "Man, who is this bitch think she is?" <laughs> so, you know, if you're talking to Oscar yeah. Isaac here, show some respect. Yeah. So, yeah, um, go kill some dinosaurs or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go Laura, find Sam Elliott. Laura Dern. So, um, but unfairly, she got a lot of a bad a bad uh, beat on on her role. I wouldn't say she was the worst, though. No, I, I think no. I think Jar Jar's got to be the worst character. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, probably. I gotta say. All right. All right. Uh, favorite favorite single line of dialogue in any of the films. I know. 
Oh, I know right where you're going with that one. I <laughs> fucking knew it. I knew you were going to say that. For anyone that doesn't know, the most famous unscripted line, an improv line by Harrison Ford in Empire Strikes Back when Princess Leia says, I love you. He was supposed to say, I love you, too. And Solo said to Larry Kasdan and Lucas and everybody else that was on set, Solo would never say that. <laughs> Solo would never say, I love you, too. And he says, I know. And it's right so before perfect. he's frozen in carbonite. Right, right before he gets his dick frozen in carbonite. <laughs> now, <laughs> and, and and it's so true because um, uh, Solo would never say that. He would right. never say that. The whole point, Solo was trying to get her to admit that she was into him, right? Right. So when it comes down to it, and I could die in this very next scene, this very next moment I could be dead, I want to hear her say it. So when she says it, he's all, yeah, yeah, I knew it. I, I know. I know. Um, I, I, oh, man, for me, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have a single favorite. It's got to be something from Vader. Um, but there's so many. It's almost like every line of Vader was just because of James Earl Jones – voice uh was so great and how mm -hmm. he delivered everything um I, before i tell you if i can figure out if i can settle on a favorite there was one line of dialogue from uh the special edition empire that i hated i was already pissed off that they had changed the original actor's voice of boba fett we talked about that right mm -hmm. that they changed the voice so in the original empire after Luke escapes at the end, right, a very pissed off Vader is walking uh, in Cloud City with all the troops behind him. And he just says one line, bring my shuttle. <laughs> like, that's it. Just bring me my shit, bitches. Like, he's pissed, right? <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm out of here. Just give me my ship and I'm out of here. Yeah. And they changed it. And again, I don't know why. But in the special editions, all of a sudden Vader says... Alert my Star Destroyer to prepare for my arrival. Like, what? It takes the anger out of it. Yeah, right. And I was, I really hated it. First of all, I didn't know why they made that change. It was used, it, it, in fact, it was one of those changes that I felt made it worse. Right? There was no point in changing that. Um, uh, but I, I don't know. The exchange, any exchange with him and Boba Fett have always been good. Um, you may take Captain Solo to Jabba the Hutt after I have Skywalker. Yeah. Like that that line right there says a, a, just a mountain of information, right? It mentions Jabba. It mentions, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, Boba Fett has wanted Solo for so long. Um, you know, it's what, funny because um, as a second choice, I probably would have gone to Yoda. For, for favorite yeah, lines. Yeah, so Yoda's like, got a lot of great lines. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so many iconic... And people repeat them. This one, them. a long time have I watched all his life as he looked away to the future, to the horizon. <laughs> Never his... Now, I'm not doing the Yoda voice, but I'm doing the line. Yeah. Never his mind on where he was or what he was doing. Right. You know? Um, yeah, Yoda's had yeah. some good ones. What's, what's that one line... Uh, Ah, there is no try. Yeah, oh, that that's one? probably yeah. That's probably Yoda's most famous one. Do, do or, or do, do not. not. There is no try. Yeah, and and that. you know the the writers of the Karate Kid kind of stole that a little bit <laughs> right. from Mr. Miyagi when yeah. Mr. Miyagi was telling Daniel Son yeah. <laughs> when, when he says, "Are are you ready?" You know, to start your training, and Daniel Son says, and Daniel's like, "Oh, I guess so." He goes, oh, "Daniel Son, walk on left side of road, good. Walk on right side of road, good. Walk in middle of the road." Squish, just like grape. <laughs> He's like, you learn karate, yes. You learn karate, no. You learn karate, I guess so. Squish, just like grape. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like the do or do not, there is no try right. uh, from Yoda. But, it, I mean, if there was a, a human version of Yoda, it would be Mr. Miyagi anyway, right? I mean, we can yeah. all agree on that. So, um yeah, so uh, it's hard to find a favorite line, but I think Yoda's got a lot of them. Um, yeah, anything from Solo, anything from Vader and Empire was good. Um, this facility is crude, but it should be adequate to freeze Skywalker for his journey to the Emperor. Um, I, uh, thought, I thought Vader's favorite or uh, my favorite line from Vader was, 
Ah! <laughs> <laughs> when he had his hands cut off. <laughs> Oh my God! You know that that that's also something that special editions did. That when Vader picks up Palpatine and launches him oh, at the yeah. end of Return of the Jedi, they've added him going no, oh, no. Yeah. You know this really terrible, terrible yeah. edition. I remember when that. we had the VHS tape of uh, Vader picking up Palpatine and throwing him. Uh, yeah, and and the electricity was you know yeah, and I remember pausing it on Vader's face when when his face would light up and you could see his skeleton through yeah. the, through the mask. <laughs> did you notice did you notice like there's little metal rods and shit in there? I don't remember. Go back go back and watch it again and you'll see part of the mechanism that keeps his breathing alive. Oh wow. Yeah. In the flashes of his skull. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> now if there was one thing I know I'm gonna catch major hell from the canon geeks on this one. If there was one thing I would change for a future special edition, CGI in at the end when Luke takes his helmet off, CGI in Hayden Christensen in full burnt. You know how Hayden Christensen looks right now in Kenobi? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you know? I don't. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, you haven't seen any of the Kenobis? I saw the first one, but he wasn't in it. Oh, my God. So you got to watch the rest. Yeah. Um, there is, there's only six episodes. They've done five already. I want to say the sixth, the final one is this Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but they show occasionally what Vader looks like with no mask on. He looks a lot like the dude at the end of Return of the Jedi. Okay. Right? He's scarred, but he's all white now. Like his skin is white because it hasn't seen the sun but in 10 years. But you can tell it's him. You can tell it's Hayden Christensen. Uh, kind of. There's a lot of makeup, yeah. a lot of scarring, a lot of makeup. But if you CGI'd it for continuity purposes, that I would be okay with. Mm. If you were to maybe reshoot it and edit it in. Yeah. You know? So uh, so it looks like Hayden Christensen at the end of Return of the Jedi. I wouldn't be so mad at that. Right. I know that some people would scream at that. Ah, that's not the right one. Eh, well, <laughs> you know, if you really want how continuity. Can you, how can you be pissed off at Boba Fett and not pissed off at that, right? Right. If they right. did that, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're okay you with being a hypocrite. That's okay. <laughs> you can't. You can't please everybody, right? <laughs> so, I would bring back the old voice of Boba Fett, and then uh, CGI in Hayden Christensen at the end of Return of the Jedi, and you got yourself a complete uh, saga yeah. there. Well, this has been a fun, uh, fun special episode. Um, when you when you proposed this, I was like, oh yeah, 45th anniversary. We got to do this. Yeah, kicking off season two. We're doing it right. Now, uh, episode two of this season, uh, which I believe will be next month, right? We do one of these monthly. Yeah. We do one of these monthly. Uh, we're actually going to do a deep dive. We'll go back to our comparisons, and we're going to pick apart uh, Dune, the the newer Dune, the 2000, was it 2020 or 2021 Dune mm -hmm. uh, with Timothy Chalamet. We're going to go with that against A New Hope. Just A New Hope. So we're not, right. we picked this episode to talk about everything Star Wars. But when we do our next episode, we won't be talking about any other episodes other than A New Hope. Yeah. We're going to compare A New Hope to Dune. And I know people already are like, that's an easy one. That's an easy one because there's a lot of comparisons. So we're going to deep dive. We're going to talk about script structure and character <laughs> development. And uh, yeah, did you only yeah. drink? You drank two of those, didn't you? Uh, yeah, boys. two, two, two of my lightsabers. So <laughs> one for Anakin and one for Luke. So Luke, you know. But then again, I, I guess that's S odd because script structure is hard to say after a couple of tall boys. Yeah. So you know what's interesting <laughs> is that they talk about Luke's lightsaber. Yeah. In the Disney sequels, because it's the one that was in his hand when his hand got chopped off. Yeah. Well, you know that Luke created a new one for Return of the Jedi. He constructed a new lightsaber that was green. Yeah. But they don't mention that in the Disney sequels at all. Their, their big thing is Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. It's the one that he lost. Right. Yeah, but, but he had already created a new one, number one. And technically, that wasn't even Luke's lightsaber. That yeah. was Anakin's. Right. So I had two tall blue Bud Lights, <laughs> one for Anakin, one for Luke, but commemorating that one blue lightsaber. Okay. <laughs> Next time I'll have to find something purple for Mace Windu. Well, he wasn't in the episode uh, for A New Hope. No, he was not. Now, so. um, before we go, I have one other question. Yeah. 
Of all the lightsabers, how come we never saw a gold or silver lightsaber? That's a good question. Wouldn't that be interesting? Gold would have been, you would think, would have been, like, powerful. Yeah, like, red is always the bad guys, and the good guys always have blue or green, sometimes purple. I remember We've in never the, seen a gold one. I remember in the 1980s, I saw Pink Floyd for the first time, and they had this uh, gold laser at the show. It was banned in many countries because it was so powerful. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, I was like, well, oh, that makes sense. It's gold. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow there hasn't been a lightsaber that's gold yet. All right, anything else? Before we close out the 45th anniversary of the greatest sci-fi saga of all time and the groundbreaking of, you know, visual effects. A new pioneering. era. A new era. Pi- pioneering. Special effects, yeah. Pioneering. Pioneering uh, in special effects and sound as well. Uh, THX, remember when that whole thing was in theaters? That that was Lucasfilm. You know, yeah. that all came from Lucasfilm. So uh, the first movie I remember seeing that was Jurassic Park. THX. Yeah. At well, the very what do you know? <laughs> yeah. What do you know? Go on, go figure. <laughs> I just remember because I went and saw that at the theater, and they did that that thing with the THX opening where it gets really loud. Yes. You know, I yeah. can't remember. Yep. And and the whole crowd lost it. They just started cheering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. You know, we did this entire episode, and while we mentioned Jurassic Park, we never once said Spielberg's name. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's interesting because, but I mean, they were friends. Lucas and Spielberg are friends, and often, uh, you know, competitive with you, with each other, but also collaborators. And um, Lucas and Spielberg, or Spielberg rather, had since thrown a little well i guess i should be the other way around lucas threw a little egg a little easter eggs in there you know that in the scene of phantom menace in the senate when they show all these aliens from all these different planets if you look closely you'll see a group of et's yeah i saw i saw that and i didn't know if it was real i saw it and i like on a meme or something or i was like yeah is that real did that really happen that really did happen yeah. didn't it yeah that really happened and that was sort of like a payback, like a thank you payback, because Spielberg did something for Lucas, a little Easter egg like that, in uh, the first Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The scene where they're raising the Ark out of its crypt. Yeah. And there's all those hieroglyphics on the wall. One of the hieroglyphics is R2-D2 and C-3PO. No. <laughs> yes. Seriously? <laughs> yes. It's a blink and you miss it. Oh, but it's my there. God. That's amazing. So, are you there? I lost you. Totally lost you. Uh oh. Well, it was at that point that my brother Jerome fell into the matrix. I did call him right back and recorded that. I'll play that at the very end here. But I just wanted to cut in here and let you know that since we recorded this episode, I have watched both Solo and finished the Obi-Wan series. And as I said at the beginning, we decided that there was far more to say, and we are working on an episode two to the Star Wars 45th anniversary tribute. That episode will drop in about a month. And as my brother says at the end, we are beginning to work on an episode featuring Dune. And I'm really looking forward to that. To close it out, I'll let you hear how my phone call to Jerome went at the end of this recording. <laughs> We're going to get this on. Hey, what happened? I don't know. I just went dead. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to cut this then. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It says it's still recording. It says you're connected, but you're not there. Did your mic go? Did your mic get unplugged? No. That's so weird. Well, everything is still normal. <laughs> I think. I think the podcast god said, it is finished. <laughs> my, the funny thing is, my laptop is like completely dead. Like, even the mouse was Did your battery die? No, it's plugged in. That's so weird. Like, the mouse won't work. Like, nothing. Like, everything's frozen. It's like it just froze. <laughs> okay, now you're off. You, you must have disconnected it. I didn't do anything. It said, Jerome has gone away. <laughs> Yeah, so 
It's all right. We're at 99 minutes, so I think it's a good place to end. Wow, we did an hour and a half of that. <laughs> Like a send off at the end, then. Oh, yeah, I, I will. I will. Okay. All right. All right, well, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to wrap this up. All right, pretty cool. Pretty good show. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> All right, start, start getting to work on Dune. All right, talk to you later, man. All right, later. All right, bye. Well, that does it. That was the, uh, that's how it. How we we uh, we wore out clean feet, I guess. Uh, we just ran it into the ground. So uh, once again, thanks for listening. Um, if you please uh, contact us through Instagram, send us a voice memo. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, love to hear your comments, uh, feedback, um, your uh, expansive knowledge of Star Wars nerddom. We'd love to hear it. Um, send us a voice memo, and uh, we'll see if we can get you on the show. So. Anyways, until next time, I'm Chris Wiegand. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.